Hi and welcome to this quick um, response to um, a topic that is quite interesting that it's uh, using buoyancy in gazebo. So I would like to um, complete or maybe give an example, a practical example of the answers given here to this question that this user basically, it, it, he or she doesn't get to work this correctly so it has multiple problems so I would like to give a tiny example of how to do it uh, with a very simple object and explain some concepts that maybe can be interesting and useful for using this this plugin so the first thing is that I've used ROS development studio to do this and I've already done, prepared all the files in a simulation, so I've done this buoyancy tests. So I'm going to launch. Mm -hmm. There we go. So this main launch is a launch that uh, generates a world that um, it's basically uh, a copy of uh, of the world given in the submarines example in gazebo documentation but without the submarines this way we can use a very simple object to explain all the concepts and make it work the basic concepts let's say so there we go so base essentially it's a world with blue walls nothing special there so the first thing we are going to do is spawn a, a very simple object to, that will allow us, us to concentrate on the concepts of how buoyancy works. So if we go here and I've done this tests and I have this model which is a simple floating sphere. So here we have it's a, it's a URDF. Also, this example is made for people that want to use URDFs instead of um, SDF models. So here we have the material defined and we have the link, which has inertia, mass, which is vital here. Then collisions, which also is vital and the visuals. Then we have some properties, physical properties like the materials, um, the friction, and how how it it behaves to external forces. And then we have this, which is the base of of how to use the the plugin. So this is the most basic way of using it, which is you don't specify anything; just specify the fluid density. This will get all the links that you have in your URDF and calculate their corresponding uh, buoyancy forces. So essentially what you have to do, the difference between SDFs and URDFs is that you have to put it inside this gazebo tag. Uh, um, apart from that, it's more or less the same. So here what we have is a sphere, that's it, that has this mass and this this radius which which it it applies and to the volume that this sphere has which is very important for buoyancy so let's have a so what i'm what i'm going to do is spawn the uh, this sphere which i have this spawned simple sphere that you see here and what it does is spawn this sphere using this spawn robot tools package that I've done already. Which, if we go here, launch, and we are using the spawn robot URDF, spawn robot URDF. And as you can see, it's using the Gazebo Ross spawn model a binary with. URDF tag and we put the um, 
the x, y, and z position and the orientation also, the model, and it's loaded through the uh, robot description. So you'll be able to afterwards publish the TFs and so on. So we have we are using this launch to do it. So let's spawn it. So cross launch. Buoyancy package spawn. We have here. There we go. So now the simulation is paused. So no physics applied. Then play and it doesn't move. Why? Because I've already set the weight in a way that the forces that go upwards so let's put this so the buoyancy essentially what it will do is apply a force in this axis in the z axis which is this blue arrow here and the weight will apply a force in the opposite direction so downwards so what we want to do is that the weight of the fluid displaced by this volume has to be the same, let's say the mass, or the, basically the weight, okay? The force has to be identical to the one made by the, the weights of the sphere. So the sphere has a mass and, and that's it. And there's a gravity and that's what it will put it down. So now, what we have here is an object that has neutral buoyancy. Whoops, there we go. So how do we change this? So let's, let's see an example. So let's delete. And then let's change the, um, the mass from 7.23 to, let's say, um, six this means that it's lighter now we're doing the sphere lighter so if we spawn it again you see that now it goes up all the way until it reaches the top of the fluid okay so there we go. Now, if we, if I can, let me, select it, okay. If we change it and we put more weight, let's say eight, for example, and now let me go down, otherwise we won't see how it goes. So if we stop the physics, just to, because I don't know exactly where it will appear. Ah, there we go. So now you can see that it's just floating around. If we play, then it sinks to the bottom until the floor. So these, these are the effects of, of buoyancy. So now... How do we calculate the weight? How do we do it so that it goes up or it goes down? So it sinks or it floats or it stays where it is. So I've done this tiny script. You can do this with any shapes, but uh, sorry. Oop, there we go. So here I've done the, a volume calculator, which what it does is calculate the volume of the sphere that you give it, but also it calculates the buoyancy force and the sphere weight, and it compares and tells you if it will float or, air or it, it will sink, or it will have neutral buoyancy, so it will stay where it is. So it, it's quite simple, actually. So the first thing you have to do is calculate the volume, so it will calculate the volume of the, of the sphere in this case, which is the formula of the sphere. And we, once we have the volume, we just 
calculate the fluid equivalent mass, which is the density of the fluid, which in our case, if we go to, sorry, there we go, the density of the fluid is 1,000, so it's the water, 1,000 kilograms per meter cubic. So we have the fluid equivalent, then the buoyancy force, which is this mass, by the gravity, let's say the, the weight of this volume of fluid of water that it's displaced, and then we have the sphere weight, so the weight, the real weight of the sphere which is the mass by the gravity. And then we compare it and we say, okay, so the final force that we have is this. So let's use this script so you can have a look. Uh, let me go. Sorry. There we go. And then I execute this. Okay. I, I've just selected, I've done sphere, but it's the same concept with cubes or cylinders, whatever. So we state the mass. In this case, for example, let's say I put, um, I don't know, uh, five kilograms. The radius, the radius of the sphere, it's, mm, there we go, 0 0.12, so 0 0.12 meters, and then the fluid density, which is 1,000, okay, and then it calculates. The volume of, of the sphere is this, then the mass of the fluid displaced by the sphere, which is 7.2. Two, so you see, so it's it weighs more, let's say. So the force will be this, 71. The weight of the sphere, because now it weighs 5 kilos, it's around 49.05. And then the resulting force is 21, positive. This means that it will float. So let's try it. We'll go here. We'll put 5.0, then I go here, let's remove the sphere, and spawn it again. And there it goes, it floats. Test. Why? Because the force is 21 positive. Okay, and basically that's how this plugin works. The basics around it. So, how do you do this with a more complex shape? Exactly the same. So I'm going to show you. It's, it's just very, very simple the way I've done it. So you have to do it more complex and tune stuff. But basically, this is the essential. So I have this narrow robot, which is um, a robot fish. And I have this one with the buoyancy implemented. And basically it's an URDF with all the links and so on. And I've just put this gazebo with a density of a fluid of 360. Why? Because I wanted to just tune it in a way that more or less it floats, more or less. You'll see just in a minute. But basically, you don't have to do anything if you wanted to run very, very basic. Of course, you have more tags, and as in the answer is given, you have to put more values and tags to specify and fine-tune it. But the basics of this is getting, if you put the density to a 1,000, you'll have to calibrate all your masses so that they have neutral buoyancy, okay? Because some ones are more, have more volume and some are, have less volume and the ratio between volume and mass can be, it's different. So let's, let's have a look. 
So I have this main ocean, I think it's called. There we go. So now, it's spawning the, in the exact same world, just that it's a more complex model. Okay, so we have this fish, and if we activate the physics, there we go. So, here we can learn a lot of things of how it works. As you can see, let's stop it for a well, moment. It's working. So, as you can see, this part has very high buoyancy. Why? Because it has very large volume and the mass is not very different from the tail, for example. We'll see it in a minute. So this, this robot tends to float like this, while the tail has very little volume and the weight is not that different. So let's have a look to the, why it's happening this. So if we go to the base link, which is the, let's say, this part of the body, the face, you see that it weighs 0 0.2 kilograms. Okay. If we go to the tail, which is this one, it weighs exactly the same. So weighing exactly the same, but having volumes totally different because this one is has a very larger volume than this, the tail, this makes that this one sinks, the tail sinks, and the face, the front end of this robot floats. Okay? So in reality, what you have to do is calibrate the weight so that it they behave as they should. And the thing is, related to the plugin, how did this work? So the plugin, what it does is it gets the links, reads each link that you have in, in your URDFs, and looks for the collision, and inside it, it says, hey, what do you have here? If it has um, a three-dimensional die or STL shape, which is not regular, it's not a basic geometry, then what it will do is calculate base, it will calculate the buoyancy based on the bounding box of this model. So basically a box of the volume that encloses this shape. So more or less, it will be a box similar to this one, but only this part, okay? And that's quite it. So if you have any questions or you would like to, for example, see a video tutorial on, on how to make this, this narrow robot fish float correctly and move around, please leave it in the comments and uh, subscribe if you haven't and hope this was useful to give a, a very simple example of how to use this plugin. So thank you and see you soon. Bye.